Welcome all of a got a Q&A video for you today. Uh, man, the channel has grown so fast. It's been a really small community uh, for the past year uh, when I made the channel and we were really just a tight-knit uh, group and I would be able to answer people's questions and we would be able to go back and forth and discuss ideas and things like that. But man, in the past week, now the channel has gone up 15,000 subscribers. I don't even see all the comments coming in anymore. So it's unfortunate, but I do try to get to everybody but it's just not possible now, so I will try to make these uh, Q&A videos uh, every once in a while. Um in these videos I'll cover the kind of quick questions that can be answered like that and of course uh, the ones that can't be answered with quick little Q&A videos like this I'll make notes and I will make videos about uh, everything I can later on it's just uh, lots of comments coming in so thank you so much to all you new people uh, welcome you're very welcome and uh, to the old people I still remember you I remember the ones I remember you who have been there uh, from the start and I will not forget you and I will always get to your questions first and the people who have come in now too. Uh, if the channel does get uh, any bigger, I'll remember you guys now uh, of the new people who have just found it. But um, yeah, anyway, here we go. Q&A. Uh, Ghost asking if I can speak about Celtic paganism. Yeah, I'd love to. I don't know a whole lot. Nobody knows a whole lot about Celtic paganism because they just have far less written sources than us, but they're still very, very similar spiritualities. I don't I don't really like speaking about cultures and history that I don't know a whole lot about. I know a little bit about the Celtic, but it would be really cool to, in the future, do some collab videos with people who know a lot more about the Celtic than me, and then we can see, of course, all of the uh, similarities between the Norse and Celtic uh, ancient spiritualities. Yeet Machine, I thought it was Norsk, if I yeah, sounds like a sailor here asking about magic, uh, for, about ships or sea craft, uh, sounds like something like that. Uh, yes, absolutely, we had magic like this. Um, I don't know if there's anything that tells us specifically how to do it uh, off the top of my head. Uh, uh, we have Havamal, um, Odin's 18 charms called Ljodatal. Um, Odin in there says that he knows how to sing a song, sing Galdr, in order to keep the ship safe and, and calm the seas, but he doesn't know, he doesn't tell us what that song is. And there's another one uh, in the poetic era too, um, Sigurdrifumal, and that is uh, the Valkyrie, Brynhildr, um, telling Sigurd that she knows runes to carve to keep the ship safe, carve some runes on the ship, but again, it doesn't tell us exactly uh, which runes. Uh, and also we have a lot of sagas mentioning certain uh, magic about the sea, calming the sea, uh, getting home safe, things like that, but n I can't think of anything off the top of my head that exactly tells us how to do it but there are some things that come a bit later on in time that definitely have pagan origin and uh yeah i can do some video about that <laughs> seafaring people that's definitely a viking subject and uh i will speak about that nathan carr do a video on tengrism he says yeah i know nothing about it uh actually i just heard it saw some little quick things uh would be interesting to take a look i love that more than more than anything else at this point in my life really there's not a whole lot much more i can learn about the norse so i always love looking into foreign spiritualities and uh and looking what similarities and what things we can uh, compare to fill in the missing pieces there's lots more <laughs> there's lots more compliments than questions here uh, thank you guys um, yeah, I get requests about how to support if I have a Patreon and things like that, and my heart goes out to you, thank you guys so much, people that want to support, but and I just don't agree with all that Patreon stuff. I, I make these videos for the people and for the world. You guys are my people, and I'm uh, people who are just tired of lies being spread uh, with no historical sources, so I'll always make these videos for free, I don't want to charge anyone for it and you know you guys honestly you shouldn't be paying you know <laughs> paying some greedy youtuber a monthly fee just for vlogging and, and doing some bullshit uh, that's your hard-earned money guys you should i would rather you save it and and invest it in yourself and and create a better future for you and your family um if you're giving someone you know monthly dues and all they're giving you back is a fuck uh, who knows what do they do you oh you get exclusive content right or you get your oh you get your name in the credits whoop de doo man that sounds like a rip off to me I don't I, I don't think I'll make a Patreon if I do 
if I do end up making one in the future, I would really like to give something back to you guys, give something really, really valuable, and I just don't know what that would be, because, um, yeah, just videos, I'll always make that for free, I don't want anyone to pay for that. If you want to support, though, you might be interested, I have an online shop, um, it's, it's totally separate, it's a little business I've set up, yeah, I sell, um, like combat sportswear and uh, and training gear for MMA and things like that. Um, the website is up, but nothing's for sale yet. I'll leave a link to it below, but check back in the next couple of weeks if you're interested in like training and those kinds of things. I'll I'll have some stuff for sale there. Uh, Rumling. Uh -huh. Yeah, so there I there I get this question a lot uh, on all the comments, and I have to answer each individual people so I have a complicated story I'm just gonna say it once here and it just takes too long I don't like to <laughs> so I don't have to say it again yes uh, Norwegian we're all from uh, Ludvik my whole family as far back as we have records a little town in the east of Norway uh, my whole family's still there and will probably never leave and uh, we've probably already been there uh, my parents are the only ones who left the town. So I've lived actually a lot of places in the world. I've lived in the U.S. Uh, for, for quite some time. Uh, Germany, uh, Greece, uh, England, I've spent a lot of time in too. I've, I've lived a lot of places. Um, Norway, I think I've only lived, if you add up everything, uh, eight, ten years in my life, I've lived in Norway total. Uh, so yeah, that's also why I speak a little bit funny. Norwegians will notice I have a little accent, but um, yeah, of course I can understand uh, Swedish and Danish too. That's no problem. Ian Carton. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of Charlemagne. You're right. I don't think anyone here is a fan of Charlemagne. His impact. Yeah, he fucked us up. <laughs> that's his impact. Especially if your ancestry is uh, Frisian or Northern German. But um, it's funny you say impact. See, there's at least one cool thing that happens when a pagan people gets Christianized and that is we start to see certain practices pop up in the sources. Uh, Charlemagne uh, made pagan gods and ceremonies and things like that illegal but there are certain things you can't stop a people from doing no matter what. You know, celebrating their holidays, speaking their language, daily practices, certain you know magical practices and traditions and these are the things that are actually far more important for paganism in in regular day-to-day -day life and the Christians you know actually they wrote a lot of these things down not even knowing what they were and that's how we still have them today that there's the uh, uh, way for us to see what it was like in ancient times so that's pretty much the only positive impact that uh, Charlemagne had. Jasmine Lauf uh, <laughs> were the Vikings as bad as most people claim <laughs> Yeah, okay, long question. So yeah, for sure, I will make videos about daily life of the Vikings. That's really interesting. And um, were the Vikings as bad as people claim? <laughs> no. Um, read the sagas, man, guys. Read the sagas. I swear everyone should read at least some of them. If you get through just 10 pages of any saga, I promise you will be blown away about how incredibly smart logical, fair, and diplomatic the Scandinavians were at the time. You're just gonna notice how fair and just they were, and they always preferred to mediate um, and come to a solution instead of being violent. Uh, and they absolutely did not harm women or children. Yeah, of course there was a couple bad Vikings, uh, like any people, but um, a couple might have raped and there were definitely some fights and battles and raiding and things like that. They absolutely did it, I'm not idealizing, but, you know, just read the sagas and you will be surprised to see how rare violence actually was. And even when violence did happen, how justified it was. It was always for a reason. It wasn't just random uh, killing. Um, so uh, I swear, when violence is a part of everyday life, people, human beings, behave a lot more when they're scared of getting... <laughs> What's that quote? I'll put it up here somewhere. Something about the axe to the head if people's being rude. Something like that. Uh, I think they're far more peaceful and civilized back then than we are today in certain ways, not every way. And um, yeah, about the sagas you mentioned and the written sources, most of them are written by Christians, yeah. Uh, a couple hundred years after the events happened, and they're not 100% reliable. Uh, but Snuri's writing um, 
and the other Icelandic sagas, they're actually uh, very reliable in comparison to some of the others. Um, the sagas in Iceland, the authors had a genuine interest and even uh, sympathy for their pagan uh, ancestors, and they wanted to preserve this history. Uh, even though they weren't allowed to write everything, they wrote down a lot. So these are actually much more reliable than the chronicles from mainland Europe, uh, in my opinion. Leota Falkner, she's asking about worshipping the gods, and she's coming in from Christianity. Um, so yeah, it all depends what your goals are, um, what, what you want to achieve. Um, I spoke about this in other videos, but don't worry about the gods too much. Um, yes, they were definitely worshipped, but it was at very specific times for a specific purpose. Like, if it was wartime, it would be Odin for sure, or Tyr. If it was just a regular daily life, or agricultural community, uh, harvest, it would be Freyr. Things like that. Um, but like I said in other videos, I would like to see people focus much more on other spirits. Uh, land spirits, elves, uh, filia, hamingya, trolls, if you're into magic, like you said. Um, these different types of things, they're around us every day. Um, and we can really uh, get a lot more out of it. And, and they were worshipped and communicated with in pagan times a lot more than the gods. Um, Worshipping the gods, like I see a lot of people doing... This is 100% a Christian thing um, that people have brought into paganism, and it's all well and good, but just, you know, it's for certain situations, not, uh, not to be done every day. I would rather you focus on these other spiritual entities uh, every day. Everlong Mystic uh, wants to see my interpretations of the runes. Uh, yeah, I have a playlist I started on the channel a while back about that. Just scroll down on my channel and you'll find a whole playlist about the runes. I haven't uh, done any videos about them in a long time now. I will. Runes, you said it right there. It's, uh, it's interpretations. There is actually very little we know about them. 99% uh, of the stuff you have probably read are just modern interpretations. And that's fine. Uh, we need to do interpretations sometimes because we don't have a, a lot. But we have to be clear about what we know and then what is just theories. Um, that's where a lot of people go wrong with runes. Um, and it's not its not any uh, of the random public's fault. It's not any of your guys' fault. It's the fault of the authors who have come out in the past 50, 60 years. These New Age books and uh, just spreading things and not differentiating their own spiritual theories uh, relative to the actual facts that we know. So read them, take ideas from them, but just take them as ideas. Don't take them as things that were actually done in history because we're not sure about most of them. <laughs> some pretty nice here. shit talking here, talking about other channels. Uh, Lauren Noel, don't know, uh, don't know if that's how you say that name there, but uh, she's asking about the Norse Gales and the Celtic Knot. So yeah, super interesting. Basically, when the Vikings settled Ireland, Scotland, Isle of Man, they mixed in with the natives there like nowhere else. Uh, the real cool thing about that is they seem like they m came together and they almost created their own people, their own culture, uh, where Vikings in other places they settled and they kind of assimilated with the local population and, you know, blended in. Uh, but the Norse Gales, they kind of said, you know, fuck all that shit, and they formed their own culture in a way, and that lasted for quite some time. Um, though that's an interesting subject. Uh, the Celtic Knot, yeah, again, this too, this type of artwork we find in the Norse world is so similar to the Celtic. Uh, the, the, yeah, that's the theory, that's what they've... Uh, uh, kind of agreed upon that this has Norse influence, but I don't know. The question is there always, uh, did these types of things, these types of cultures have influence on each other uh, during the Viking Age when they traveled and traded? Or did they just evolve apart um, going back thousands of years and they evolved into the Norse people and the Celtic people and they just evolved in a certain way but ended up being very similar anyway? Um, uh, so that's a really, really fascinating subject. Okay, two questions right after each other here. Charles Anderson and Lost Aggie. 
how accurate was the Vikings TV show? <laughs> Not very. Uh, the shows and games and movies are for entertainment. I have no problem with that. Uh, you know, I could pick out and point every 30 seconds something inaccurate about the TV show, but that's no fun. You know, it's an accurate show would be honestly lots of farming and fishing and relationships and just regular daily stuff. Um, but that would be a boring as hell show. So of course they have to spice it up a bit with some violence and some inaccurate accuracies but uh yeah it's all, all in good fun i actually like last kingdom though uh better just everything's better the plot the acting the the script um the history the accuracy everything pretty much so i i definitely recommend last kingdom if people haven't seen torsten frank uh that's a long text here yeah, those types of things, I'm always curious about the sources. Uh, folk tales or place names and, uh, you know, local legends, things like that. The question is, did they all originate around the 1700s uh, when some of these folk tales came out because they read the old Norse sagas and they could have some knowledge of these myths already and they just copied it? Uh, that's what the scholars will tell you, but I don't I don't quite agree. I think uh, if you ask me I think a lot of these places and stories they're much older and do have origin in pagan times Especially in certain regions and remote villages where Christianity never got a real strong foothold That's just uh, what I think though. Lily Cresselius Differences between Norse and Germanic paganism. Yeah, I've done videos on that uh, speaking about the Germanic peoples is super broad because the Germanic peoples really spread to all these areas and most in the migration period, uh, quite a bit before the Viking Age, and they would have all had slightly different practices. Same religion, of course, same gods, same general spirituality, but uh, different practices, And but nothing is really written down about the practices in all of these places. So what we do is we have to compare that with what we know with the Norse, and you know look at some archaeological finds and things like that and um, and go from there about different practices of, of different Germanic areas and this is this is really my main goal in the next few years because there are a lot of people looking to the Norse sources and that's great but that really only shows us how the religion was practiced in Scandinavia in the Viking Age but there are many many other places that this exact same religion was practiced like all of these places here that have Germanic ancestry the practices were different we just have to go a little bit deeper and come up with some reconstructions like that uh, if you're Anglo-Saxon for example you know instead of Blutz you would be having a symbol uh, things like that, or if you're maybe uh, Italian from the Lombardy area, and that means you have uh, Longobard tribe ancestry. That was a very warlike tribe, and they had very long beards. So if you're Northern Italian, you know, and you'd like to practice this, maybe uh, you, your most likely god to worship would be Odin or Tu, and it might it might even would be a requirement in that. Uh, particular tribe that you don't cut the beer just little things like this that uh, we can develop it's too much work for one person and I don't know all of your cultures as well as you do so I would love to see that taking some information from the Norse sources but then reconstructing it with how this Germanic paganism would have been practiced in your area Mike I have done Mike Som du har läst böckerna för varje gång Marie Cachet. Yes, he's asking about the fairy tales. Uh, yes, absolutely some of these uh, Scandinavian folk tales were starting to be written uh, around 1600s and later on. So this was long after pagan times. But tales are much, much older than that, like I mentioned before. Um, the question is, were the tales there for many thousands of years and they just survived the ages? Um, unlike the myths. Or were these tales kind of created right after Scandinavia became Christian? Um, since the gods and myths were not allowed to be told anymore, maybe they changed it up and, and called them fairy tales to avoid, you know, censorship and make them more Christian friendly at the time. It depends, but either way, yeah, the, the tales are much older than believed and they reflect pagan spirituality, most of them. Chance McAdden? wants to know how blutes were practiced everything about it yeah i did a whole playlist about this what 
every single source uh, says. It's the second little playlist on my channel, so you can find it there. It's everything, and I even, you know, uh, show you the blutes that I do myself just to give you ideas of how we can do these things in the most uh, accurate way possible. Were people sacrificed? Yes, sometimes, but it's it's not what you think. It was most of the signs point to uh, they were criminals and used as a death sentence or maybe like war prisoners things like that they didn't just sacrifice you know willing you know people or or pick someone who they don't like that they no it wasn't like that flisson asking about freya and if she was more important in the old days uh before the viking age um so yeah there's a clear switch not just in the north world but everywhere in the world really as a people were more tribal and peaceful, uh, the fertility gods are the primary ones worshipped. So Freya, yes, um, as cultures get bigger and away from the tribal life and they start to get in big cities and towns and, and look at other things, they start to fight more. And that's when the gods that are associated with war in our own spirit and um, things like that are worshipped. Odin is of course one of those. Uh, especially in the north we see this happening in very early days when, when certain tribes interacted. Um, Freya as Odin's wife? Yeah, that's the theory. Uh, there's a theory that Freya and Frigg are actually the same deity. Um, we do know Odin had sex with Freya from one of the from one of the myths, and that's that's his daughter in some of the myths. So uh, yeah, that uh, that doesn't make quite sense. So yeah, there are some scholars who actually theorize that all the female goddesses are in fact interchangeable and they just simply represent different uh, aspects and different times uh, of feminine nature and the feminine creative forces um, long subject yeah but it's very possible Went on yeah more patreon questions <laughs> thanks guys so much like I said I don't want your money I do these videos for you guys uh, you're all my people I'll tell you what though if you want to support me <laughs> I just had an idea the best idea just find some dumbass in the comment section <laughs> just leaving stupid comments and just let them have it roast them get them out of here they're they're starting to show up now um don't don't roast each other be nice to each other you know who you are we're all here for the same thing we're trying to you know uh yeah, learn some knowledge about history and spirituality. More, don't make fun of each other, but if there's a person that's clearly coming in here just to troll and leaving stupid comments, man, light them up. That is just brightens my day, and that's the best support you can give me. First, I, I don't have to do it myself. If I go and, and I see some stupid comment and I already see like three or four <laughs> of you guys already responded to them, that just makes my day. It makes me happy. Yeah, let them, let them have it. That's the best support you can give me. And that's free. That doesn't cost you anything. That's just a bit of fun for everyone. And it keeps the channel kind of uh, close-knit with people who are really here to, you know, at least uh, give constructive ideas with each other. Because I do want to hear from all of you. I want to hear all of your ideas. But, um, yeah, some people just don't know <laughs> how to do that. And they just want to troll. Kimber Blue asking about Heimskringla. Uh, yeah, see, Juni answered already. Yeah, my last post, the one just before this one, uh, has a review of Heimskringla and a link to the one that I have. But they're all good, really. That's just the that's just the one that I use, that I linked there. Ted Rowe, that's a, quite a long one. Yeah, beautifully put, beautifully put. As I said in other videos, uh, you don't have to obsess over the gods or even call yourself a part of the Norse spirituality. You can you can be Christian, you can be whatever. A lot of people, it's just simply wanting to learn about their heritage, and that's okay. The wisdom in the past that, unfortunately, a lot of modern people don't want to learn from. But if all of you are here, we, we know already that, that you believe that humans in the past, you know... Uh, they had some wisdom that we can learn from and they were more wise and advanced than us in, in, in a few ways and that's why we're all here. You don't have to be pagan to enjoy this channel. Cory... <laughs> 
Yeah, there's a few people talking shit here. Man, I get this pretty often the, the, this past couple of months. People coming to me and talking shit about other pagan YouTubers that they've watched. I honestly haven't heard of uh, most of these guys that you're telling me about. I'm the wrong one to ask. I'm, I don't, I'm not on YouTube or any community groups uh, that much because I'm too busy to get involved with all that. But I'll check them out. Uh, I don't want to start any rivalries, though. I don't want to say anything bad about anyone. Unless they start. If it's, if some other YouTubers want it, I'll, I'll, I'll give them some. <laughs> I'll roast them. You know this. But I would rather make friends instead of enemies. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, if they want some, I'll give it to them. Jackie Madalena. Pagan influence on Christian holidays. Uh, absolutely, yeah. I have a playlist about holidays and traditions, too. That's on my channel. Um... It's literally every single one, uh, every single holiday, at least that we have in the north, uh, in Scandinavia, uh, there's at least some evidence that it was pagan of origin. Um, and pagans loved holidays, <laughs> and we see it today in Scandinavia. We have so many holidays where the whole country just shuts down, and there's nothing to eat. The grocery stores are closed, and nothing to eat besides fucking pizza and kebab, and I'm hungry. <laughs> but it's like nowhere else in the world. Our lazy asses like to take days off and party. Then we get hard back to work. We work hard, but we definitely like our free time, and this is... This is deeply involved in our uh, history for thousands of years. So yes, almost every holiday has some pagan, you know, origin or influence at least. Michael. Okay, I'm not done school. Um, yeah, he's recommending a link and asking about the similarities to Freemasonry. I'll take a quick look. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that video is five hours long. Yeah, I'll check it out. Well, I, I probably won't, but I'll watch a little bit of it. Um, uh, yeah, I'll watch a little. It looks pretty cool. I don't know anything about Freemasonry, but that subject has come up a couple times, and people asking the past few weeks, um, noting some parallels there. I know nothing about it. I, I really don't, but I'll do some looking and see what I can find out. Yellow Man... Yeah, yeah, so there are two different religions. Druids were Celtic and the Norse, that's two different religions. They're related, they're very close related, they're cousins. Um, Druids in the Norse beliefs would be called uh, Gothi or Vitki, um, or of course the Völva if it was a female. I don't know a whole lot about the Druids, I've, uh, I've definitely done a good uh, amount of it, but from what I've seen it's almost the same types of practices as the Norse, um, at least if we go far back in time. The Druids were, were quite a bit before the Viking Age, and they think they were pretty much gone by the Viking Age. I don't agree. I think they were still there in some form, but um, yeah, that's at least what the scholars agree on. <laughs> yeah, more talking shit. <laughs> I don't like it. Yeah, I've seen Audith Hedigid. Um, I, I saw him a while, a couple of years ago. I watched his stuff. I haven't lately, so I can't say anything. Only what others have told me, man. You guys, you know me. You don't have to worry about me going woke or a social justice warrior. I think, I think more you'll have to worry about me being anti woke <laughs> and just roasting these people and getting canceled and removed from here. That's probably more likely, but I'm gonna try to <laughs> stay away from all that politics stuff so we can keep the channel here. Eric Lorraine, why worship the elves? And ancestors if we are all reincarnated anyway um yeah geez that could be done for a lot of reasons uh all pagan cultures around the world had uh some sort of ancestral worship especially the ones that believe in reincarnation uh, there could be lots of reasons for this. Um, uh, the soul uh, is believed in a lot of cultures to have multiple parts. Part of your soul gets reincarnated into a new body. Part of it remains in the spirit world and then reunited again when you die. Um, sometimes ancestral worship is just to honor the deeds of ancestors. Um, also telling these stories uh, actually helps us remember past lives um, and what has been passed down to us. Uh, also something cool about this that you asked, whenever some type of, uh, whenever we hear some type of practice about calling the ancestral spirits or waking the ancestral, uh, waking the dead, things like that, um, alpha blot, utiseta, uh, it always is done in the middle of the night as opposed to other magic practices. Why? 
Well, in case you're summoning a spirit, but that spirit is actually reincarnated in a human body that's living right now, that's going to be very hard to summon him in the middle of the day if he's driving his car and, and he has to leave his body and, and someone summons your spirit. That doesn't work. Um, this is why we summon ancestral spirits at night, because if they are, in fact, reincarnated and they're living today in a new body... Um, they're asleep and their spirit can much easier uh, come in and out of their body. That's at least what the, the sources say. But um, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, also, reincarnation, remember, it doesn't happen right away. It takes at least my, nine months, right, uh, for the pregnancy. And we have uh, a saga of it taking 150 years and uh, other records around the world of it taking much longer. So it all depends. Brian Fox asking about the stars, sun, and the moon. Uh, yes, absolutely, we had deities representing these things, uh, Sol, Mani, uh, uh, various stars and, and things like that. But the sources we have on that uh, in the Norse myths definitely don't put enough emphasis on how important these things actually were in pagan times. They were absolutely a central part of our spirituality. Uh, the sun and the moon affects everything. Were they worshipped? Uh, in very ancient times, yes, all primitive tribal cultures had some sort of uh, sun or moon worship. In the Viking Age, we don't really have any evidence that they did at that time, but still, they were very important, especially the full moon was very, very important for bluts and other very sacred uh, spiritual practices. <laughs> some more shit talking. <laughs> Thank you, Vicky. Uh, Denis Kolosov, uh, sounds like an Eastern European asking about his ancestors, maybe, the Rus Vikings. Uh, yes, they are very, very closely um, identical uh, to the Vikings in Scandinavia, with a few small differences there would be, of course. Again, we don't have a lot of sources for this. Uh, Ibn Fadlan's account of the Rus Vikings is the best one. Really fascinating, and I can make a whole long video about that whole... Uh, uh, situation there. Um, the question about the Rus or the Vargarian Guard too, or any of these, uh, you know, uh, Scandinavian descended peoples in the east of Europe is how many generations were they removed from native Scandinavians? Yes, we know Swedish Vikings came to the east and did all this cool stuff, but was it Vikings actually born and raised in Sweden that came there directly, first generation? Or were they Swedish Vikings who traveled east, you know, married some beautiful Slavic girls, had some kids, and a couple generations down the road, that was the Rus that we read about. We don't know. I think it's probably a combination of the two, but uh, yeah, lots of videos to come on that one for sure. Illuminati? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I actually spoke with him. He reached out to me, the guy from Forum Borealis. He, he might have me on his podcast sometime. I haven't seen that episode, and I know nothing about Freemasonry like I mentioned before, so I can't say, but uh, from what I've been hearing, yeah, it looks pretty interesting, so I will, uh, I'll check all that out sometime soon. Aske one uh, Valhalla by Peter Madsen. Yeah, I read his comics when I was a kid and saw the movie. I don't really remember too much. Um, I think he probably... He probably could have drawn the comics a little bit more manly, but yeah, I got no problem with these comics or movies about Norse culture. As long as they're for kids, you know. These, that's what people understand, these myths were first uh, created for kids. They, they would have been told to children in the Viking Age, too, uh, as, as fun stories, as a way to understand the universe. And, you know, they would understand these myths more and more as they got older. Problem is, today... <laughs> It's just dumbass adults who watch these shows and books and comics and play these video games and they know nothing about history and they think that all these things are true and they just assume our ancestors were a bunch of dumbasses, <laughs> barbaric cavemen. Um, so it's the adults with the child's brains looking at these things in modern times that's the problem. But that's why I'm here and that's why you're all here too because we're trying to fix that. More Patreon stuff. I already spoke about that. Katarina Wickholm, um, asking about Frey and the Norse cult. Uh, yes, Frey is very associated with horses and fertility, as you know. Uh, 
but what most people don't know is you said it right there in your comments. Another name for Freud was Freud. It meant the same thing back then as it does today in Scandinavia. Seed or even sperm. And it's incredible how closely these things are connected. And Freud in the myths always has to do with uh, masculine fertility forces. And for sure he's, he's a very, very ancient deity going back to the Bronze Age, probably even before. Of course, it, it would have had a different name most likely. But uh, yeah, very interesting and I will speak more about that too. Mr. Parahesian. Yes, absolutely. The language is the key to understanding some of these lost secrets, um, like you mentioned. Uh, the ruling powers, they can destroy our written sources and traditions over a thousand years, but they can't make us speak a certain way. They try to, but they're not able to. So language study has an incredible amount of things that we can learn from. A perfect example, most of you, before you came to my channel, didn't even know that every single god's name has it was a real old Norse word with a definition but scholars over the past 200 years they had just haven't even bothered to translate the gods names in the myths and without that the entire myth just sounds like a bunch of gibberish um, but when you translate the actual gods names you know that everything starts to make a lot more sense then uh, I recommend best translation of the Eddas is Maria Kvilhaug's books. Um, she is one of the few authors that's actually translating the myths word for word and trying to give a complete understanding. Idealic fool? Well, <laughs> hope we can uh, get you to subscribe. Man, the only... Yeah, I think this is a lot of people that have come here too. The Most of the two videos the, that people have seen are the ones where I'm just talking shit. <laughs> All my other videos I put in a lot of work, sources, you know, etymologies, everything, and, and a bit more academic, but it's weird. The two videos on the channel that I just decided to get in front of the camera and talk shit with no preparation whatsoever, those are the ones that have the most views. Uh, I haven't seen that channel, but... Um, yeah, that's the interesting part of the migration. Um, our prose Edda also says something similar about this uh, original migration of kind of the Germanic spirituality uh, people who are coming to Scandinavia. It's difficult to say since the only evidence we have is archaeology, but um, yeah, lots to speak about there. Nicola Walsh, recommended books. Yeah. So I did a video about the top five books too. You can find that on my channel. Um, Varg's books are great. Um, I have all of them. Um, they're not the best for beginners if that's where you are. Uh, I started reading his stuff more than 10 years ago now, really. Um, and he writes in a not super academic professional way. He has a lot of theories and you just don't know where the hell they came from, you don't know where the sources came from and you just kinda, ah, okay, cool book but I'm gonna throw it away. But then when you really get into the sources and learn certain things from the primary sources and comparative mythology and pagan cultures from different places in the world, you end up saying, holy shit, Varg was right the whole time on most things. I don't agree with him on everything, but uh, absolutely he's uh, one of the top people in the world um, to, to, to speak about Norse spirituality and really interpreting the myths. So yeah, I recommend his books 100%, but I would go directly to the primary sources first and then progress on to get his books after. Basil? I don't know if that's a question or some Bible quotes. <laughs> I don't know about that. Okay. Okay, lots of stuff here. M. Rat, where is Valhalla in relation to Yggdrasil? Uh, so we don't know. The sources don't say anything about that. Um, but about Yggdrasil, um, Yggdrasil very clearly represents in the myths, represents the human body. It also very clearly represents the world as a whole. In other myths, it clearly represents the universe as a whole, uh, or other dimensions, or trees, or plants, or rocks. And this is, Yggdrasil is the absolute perfect symbol in our myths for paganism and animism. It sounds a bit confusing, but this is how animist culture believed everything in a way. Humans are no different from a tree, or an animal, 
or a rock or even the world or the universe as a whole. Everything is believed to have a body and a consciousness, a life and a spirit. And in different myths, Yggdrasil represents uh, different things, but it always comes back to, uh, you know, certain parts of whatever the organism is it is referring to. The whole world, the the body, anything. It's, it's just like this little hair on our arm is is a living, conscious thing that knows what to do, and it can die too, and it's a part of our body. That's what we are to the world. Everything is a part of everything. Um, when you think about it, if you get bigger and bigger, that's just, that's just the key to understanding animism, um, and, uh, and paganism. So that's, uh, super cool, and that's why Yggdrasil is such a sacred symbol. That looks like about it. That's all the other questions, uh, uh, at least, but, uh, there were many more compliments, and I thank you guys all for complimenting. Um, yeah, welcome to the channel. That's all I'll say for today, and I'll uh, I'll see what happens. Um, uh, reach out to me on Instagram if you have some uh, m a little bit deeper, uh, more more uh, private questions. Um, I'll always answer there. Um, I'll maybe do these Q and A videos every so often, but there's just so many comments coming in right now, I can't get to them all. But um, yeah, if you really want to reach out to me, Instagram is the best. I'll for sure get those and be able to reply. Um, yeah, that's all I'll say for today. That video was long, but um, we see us next time.